Hello. So we're in Microsoft Flight Simulator today, today, taking a look at the King Air. This is the Black Square King Air. The reason we are looking at it is because it has turboprop engines. And I've been on a bit of a journey of discovery today, learning how turboprop engines actually work. It's always been a bit of a mystery to me. So what I've learned, I'm going to share with you. Hopefully this will be useful to others. And hopefully we won't get too many real world pilots cringing at my descriptions of things. I think I'm broadly on the right track. And it's kind of, it's all starting to fall into place and make sense of what I've seen in the simulator and how it actually relates to, you know, controlling a real turboprop. So if we have a look closely at these turboprop engines on the King Air, I'm going to pull up a diagram that I found on the internet. It's a very good diagram, which shows an overhead view of the same engine. So you will notice down the middle of the engine there are a number of, number of axles. There is an axle, axle at the back with compressor blades on it. This is actually a gas turbine engine. And what's kind of interesting to me is it's pointing backwards. So the air comes in through the front of the engine, is sucked up into the, at the back of the engine, into the turbine blades, and then is pushed into the combustion chambers. So when you start the engine, you're using, it's kind of illustrated by these black gearboxes here. When you start the engine, you use electric motors to spin up this axle. And that sucks, that spins the compressor blades, which suck air through the inlet into the engine. Yeah, that compressed air is then comes into the combustion chambers where fuel is squirted in or atomized into the airflow and ignited. So that obviously gets very hot and very high pressure very quickly. And at that point, it goes through a compressor turbine and leaves the engine. So that is kind of your, your old school jet engine right there. Of course, what it is doing as well is driving itself. So the, the compressor turbine that the hot air goes through spins the turbine faster, which sucks more air in, which expands faster, and so on and so forth. It's kind of bootstrapping itself into life. So obviously, once it gets to a certain speed, the electric gearbox can be pulled away and it's kind of self-perpetuating so the interesting thing there then is the exhaust gas from the gas turbine pushes a separate axle which is the free power turbine now this runs at an incredible speed running you know with the compressed air the hot compressed air that's coming off of the gas turbine so it's essentially windmilling and at the end of its axle is a gearbox which drives the propeller. So that is, in a nutshell, your gas, your um, turboprop engine. So the hot air leaving the gas, the gas turbine engine drives a windmill with a gearbox to the propeller. So when you are using the power levers in the cockpit, you are controlling the injection of fuel you know, you're allowing more fuel to be burnt to create higher pressure to spin the engine faster, which then spins this axle faster. And then your RPM levers are controlling the gearbox that interfaces the free power turbine with the propeller. Obviously, they can't be a, a direct drive between them because the, the torque would be enormous. So that's why you get all the dials inside the cockpit and we'll have a look at that we'll, we'll fire the engines up we'll sit on the parking brake the whole time but we'll fire the engines up and see how the relationship of the different things works okay so let's go and get inside the airplane and actually see this happen so we're not actually going to go anywhere today we're just going to sit here with the engines running rooted to the spot so we'll remove the yoke out of the way and we'll go and turn on the battery in the King Air and we'll turn on the beacon light. And before, well, before we go any further, it's worth having a look actually. So in its um, cold and dark configuration, the propellers are pulled back to feather. So let's go and look around to the front of the aeroplane. Now look at the configuration of those propellers. They are facing the airflow, that's called feathered. In other words, they're not grabbing at the air. So even if it was spinning, the propeller would not be grabbing any air and forcing it over the wing or through the inlet of the engine. If we move the propellers out of feather into the, or move the RPM levers, sorry, out of feather towards the normal range of um, motion, and suddenly the propellers are spun around. 
so if you look from above very carefully you can see there's about a 30 degree angle of attack of the blade to the airflow at the end of the blade yeah so if this was spinning it would be forcing air behind the aeroplane but notice something if you push the rpm levers further forwards no configuration change happens here so the rpm levers are purely controlling the gearbox yeah so we're going to leave them all the way forwards for engine startup at least so then to start the engines in the king air we hit the starter switch for the right engine and you will immediately see the electric motor is spinning up the turbine that's the axle at the back of the engine when it gets to about 15 percent of its maximum speed we can move the fuel condition lever for that engine to low idle so that is now squirting fuel into the combustion chamber and igniting it which creates in extremely high pressure air which then spins the free turbine which at the moment is on a very low rpm or sorry no it's on high rpm so you can see the high uh, the rpm is increasing for the propeller on the front of the engine so after that's been running for a while we can turn the starter off yeah, and the engine is quite happily running away now at, at idle and we can turn the generator on off of that drive shaft so the engine is now the gas turbine is spinning the free turbine and we are also getting electricity being generated off of that axle as well okay so let's do the same for the other engine so left engine on so the electric motor spins up the gas turbine then we introduce fuel and ignite it so it continues on round. When it gets to about 45%, we can go and turn off the starter. So we're just waiting for the turbine RPM to increase. So that comes off. And then we can oops, move the generator to on. Oops, oh, I'm always doing this. It's really fiddly with the mouse. Uh, so we've got the, both generators running so the next thing we need to do now we've got the generators running is turn the inverters on turn the avionics on and you can see the various enunciations over here of what's going on around the airplane we need to open up the bleed air at bleed air valves and we've got the oxygen system is not armed so that's this lever down here we've got the rudder boost and the pitch boost are off and the auto throttle is not armed so we go and arm the auto sorry auto feather not auto throttle auto feather is armed and then we've got the rudder boost and the electric trim okay and now it's just a, a thing about external power is not being used even though it's available we're not going to use it okay so the airplane is basically sat here now and it's fully configured we'll go and get the gps out of our face over there <laughs> and we can watch the levers now and play around and see this relationship between power torque and rpm to kind of explain what's going on to you so itt is inter turbine temperature so that is the temperature as it describes between the turbines yeah so it's here with the torque is the torque being measured it's usually done with oil pressure that the um, the gearbox is experiencing from the free turbine the propeller rpm is exactly what it says the turbine rpm is exactly what it says and fuel flow is exactly what it says obviously oil pressure as well but we're more interested in these levers here so i'm going to push at the moment i've got the throttles on idle i'm going to push the power levers forwards then so you can see immediately the turbine rpm comes up first and then the propeller rpm chases it look at the torque so at the moment we're at 60 percent torque i'm going to push through further on the power and we can get the torque up to just above 100 percent so in other words we are pushing the gearbox at right just above its limits when we're at full power at sea level at high rpm now watch what happens if we lower the rpm watch the torque so I'm going to incre increase power again so we're putting all of the power through but we're not driving the propeller as fast 
look, the talk being experienced has gone through the roof. So the reason for this, the easiest way I can describe it is if you've ever been on an exercise bike, the faster you spin the pedals, the less effort requ is required. And that's the same with the propeller. So the amount of force required to spin the propeller at a given speed, the faster it spins, the less extra effort is required to keep it spinning. So that's what you can see going on there. Let me just stop this from flashing over here and stop these from flashing. So that's what's going on here. If you actually drive the propeller slowly, it requires more torque or more power to, to spin it slowly. If it's already spinning fast, it has momentum and not as much um, torque is required to spin the axle. Okay. This is where it gets really interesting on top of all of this is we are at sea level almost. As we get higher in the air, or in the if we get higher in the atmosphere, once you get to about 20,000 feet in a King Air, if you imagine the, the air pressure coming into the engine and the pressure being generated in the combustion changes, uh, combustion chambers it dies off because the higher you are in the atmosphere the thinner the air becomes and you get to a point where the maximum amount of power going that you can generate by igniting the air coming in isn't as high as the amount of torque that you can supply to the propellers so you know you run out of torque effectively so you are you talk about being torque limited below 20,000 feet. In other words, you have to regulate power to keep the engines below 100% torque. Once you get above 20,000 feet, you get into this realm of actually manipulating the RPM to keep the engine in a good state. Because you, you know, even at 100% power, the propellers can't be driven quickly enough to to maintain the talk anyway hopefully this has all made a bit of sense to you it's some of it's really counterintuitive so i'm going to pull the engines back to idle and we can watch all the needles drop off so just to reiterate the gas turbines are spinning they are creating air pressure which is spinning an axle which drives the propellers the propellers are controlled by a gearbox which you can manipulate with the rpm controls but you need to be mindful of torque the whole time as well. So at lower altitudes, you need to be careful you don't overdrive the gearboxes controlling the propellers. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, something that's worth looking at with that, if we look back at the diagram, um, if you've had a look at any of the arrows or anything like that, they have a nice light on the dashboard that lights up and warns you about over, over boost. Notice the engines on the King Air do not have waste gates. That's why you need to be careful about the torque. In something, in some of the smaller GA planes, the engines are engineered in such a way that any excess um, gas being generated that would have overtorqued the engine exits the engine. That doesn't happen on this model of engine, so it, obviously this varies from plane to plane about what hardware they have. So it's just something to be aware of, of why you need to keep an eye on torque at lower altitudes in the King Air. Because it doesn't have waste gates on the engines, so you can overdrive the gearboxes to the propellers. Anyway, hopefully that's been really useful to you. So you can see the, the aeroplane sat here spinning away, not doing much. <laughs> and um, I'm going to leave it there and we'll see you again soon. So yes. This is what I've learned so far. Obviously, we need to go and put this into practice, flying it and seeing how we can control the aeroplane through different um, uh, different parts of the flight envelope, different altitudes, different airspeeds to see how it affects us. But that's the theory behind it anyway. I'll see you again soon.